we now come to the fifth asymptotic notation, which is the little omega notation. Again, the little omega notation is analogous to the big omega notation, just as the little o notation was analogous to the big O notation. And like the little omega notation, sorry, like the little o notation, the little omega notation is not going to be used very frequently. So recall that big omega of f of n was defined to be the set of all functions with either a larger rate of growth than f of n or the same rate of growth as f of n. For example, big omega of n square contains functions like n square, half n square, 2 n square, 100 n square, 1 upon 1000 n square and so on. All these functions have the same rate of growth as n square which is why they are in big omega of n square. But these other functions n cube or in general any cubic polynomial or any polynomial with a degree more than 2 these functions are going to have a larger rate of growth than f of n. And that's the reason they are present in big omega of n square. So again, we can think of the functions in big omega of n square as being of two types. Those that have the same rate of growth as, f, as, as n square and those that have a larger rate of growth than n square. Little omega of f of n is the set of all functions with a decidedly larger rate of growth than f of n. So only functions of one of those two types are going to be part of this set little omega of f of n. For example, little omega of n square is only going to contain functions that have a larger rate of growth than n square. So it's not going to contain functions like n square, half n square, 2 n square and so on because those functions grow at the same rate as n square. But the other functions, the cubic functions, the, 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 the polynomials that have a degree more than 2, such functions grow at a rate of, uh, at a rate that is faster than the rate of growth of n square. And so such functions are present in the set little omega of n square. Here are a couple of more examples. The function 2n square is present in the set little omega of n. And that's because this function grows at a rate faster than the rate of growth of n. The function 2n does not belong to the set little omega of n because the function 2n grows at the same rate as n. Just as we did for the little o notation, we can provide a set theoretic definition for the little omega notation and we can compare it with its uh, uh, its other counterpart, the big omega, uh, the definition for the big omega notation. So the set theoretic definition for the big omega notation was that big omega of f of n is the set of all functions t of n such that there exists some positive constant c such that whenever n is large enough, t of n is going to be lower bounded by some by that constant multiple of f of n. Little omega of f of n is defined to be the set of all functions t of n such that for all constants c greater than 0, note the difference from this, this definition, instead of there exists you now have for all constants c, for any constants, any positive constant that you may choose, once n becomes large enough, t of n is going to be lower bounded by the constant multiple of f of n for any, for any positive constant. So for this to happen, t of n must have 
a larger rate of growth than f of n. Because if t of n had the same rate of growth as f of n, then I could choose a constant small enough that you know this function, the constant associated with this function becomes smaller than this function. And so this lower bounding wouldn't hold anymore. So, but if t of n is growing larger, at a larger rate than f of n, then it doesn't matter what constant I use. A function that has a larger rate of growth, you know, a higher power of n, for example, is eventually going to overtake any other function whose power of n is lower, even if the constant associated with that function is huge. So it should be clear from these two definitions and also from these two definitions that if a function is in the set little omega of f of n, it must also be in the set big omega of f of n. Because big omega of f of n is really a superset of the set little omega of f of n. In addition to the functions in little omega of f of n, big omega of f of n contains functions that have the same rate of growth as f of n. So if t of n is in little omega of f of n, then it's in big omega of f of n as well. But the converse is not true. You could have a function in big omega of f of n, which is not in little omega of f of n. For example, n square is in big omega of n square. Let's make this 2n square. But it's not in little omega of n square. And that's because we can choose a constant c, let's say c equal to half, such that even for large values of n, 2n square is not going to be is not going to be bounded from below by c times n square. Actually, sorry, I, sh I should have said that the constant c uh, should be greater than the, the value of the constant here. So the constant c that we need to choose is should be greater than or equal to 2. So if we choose a constant c equal to 3, for example, we know that 2n square is always going to be less than 3n square. So it's not true that for all constants, for all positive constants, 2n square is going to be lower bounded by a constant multiple of n square. Because if you choose a constant c equal to 3, then 2n square is actually less than or equal to 3n square, not greater than or equal to. So 2n square does not belong to little omega of n square, but it does belong to big omega of n square. 